So the meeting is now being recorded. All right, thank you. Um, we're missing Laura. Um, so I will be sharing today. Um, and uh, I do see that we have some attendees. So after we um, do our um, review of the minutes, we'll take public comment. We also need a minute taker. Oh, that's right. Laurie, I see that you are supposedly. I did it last week. You? Oh, that was from last week. Oh, yeah. OK, that was. So the next name on the list, from if you look at the minutes. I was just looking at where to go. I can open them up, too. Mm. Yeah. That bounces back to the top, then it's I Andra. guess so. So, yep. So, oh, so Basu, if you're chairing, then Basu would be the next person. Is that okay, Basu? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, the minutes from last week, do you want to put them up? Sure, I'll share Stephanie, them. But hopefully, People have already reviewed them, um, and we can move through them quickly. So um, are there any changes that people want to make? I had a clarification. Um, I thought it could be clearer. Um, <clears throat> I was only on for the very beginning, um, but uh, um, looking at the staff <coughs> update, um, particularly under um, Anna's um, reporting in. Um, the one, two, three, fourth. The fourth um, bullet. Wasn't sure if um, that was clear because uh, at one point it says in the middle uh, draft utility disclosure by law I think that means rental disclosure by law there were two uh, if you'll go back up there I think that's up at the beginning yep I'm just giving people an opportunity to read I was scrolling slowly ish uh, um, People yeah, my have my, it. So if you could just scroll to the top, Stephanie. Oh, the very top. I'm sorry. Um, my understanding is that that there was that that Anna is it first name had um, was considering a different bylaw around rental utility disclosure. Yeah, but separate it from the ut ut utility, not rental. What? Rental utility disclosure. The third bullet? Rental utility. Well, maybe we could ask Anna for clarification, Anna. seeing that she's here. So, right. Yeah. So, good idea. And I also wanted to check on um, Stephanie noted that you're working on a residential energy labeling with other groups. And I think that's, is that referring to the same thing? That no, it's a doing? separate. It's a separate effort okay. by NEEP that's underway. I can mention it again later. But OK, it'd be good to get NEEP in there um, so that that's clear that it's not the building electrification. So I'm, I'm clear if you're wanting clarification for the other item. 
um, I guess let me get, uh, let me find Anna. Anna, I see your hand up, hold on a moment. Okay, you're unmuted. Thanks, Stephanie. Hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, it is a rental utility disclosure bylaw, and I am waiting right now to see what I was what I was saying last time was that I don't know if it's kind of moot at this point when the new rental registration process, um, rental registration bylaw comes into play, um, I guess. So once we start looking at that, I'm waiting to see their final draft to see if they cover what I would cover in a uh, rental utility disclosure bylaw. So that's um, it's it's a bit of a holding pattern right now because I think that they're trying to get at a lot of what I would be getting at in in a rental utility bylaw disclosure bylaw. So it is rental utility um, to answer your question, and it's different than Stephanie's thing. I think we were trying to figure out if you know four people were all trying to do the same thing at once. Well, ours. So the one that I'm working on is a building disclosure bylaw, which is completely different because it's an all encompassing thing, but it may be similar to what the RMI effort is, is what it yeah. sounds like to me. So maybe that's the clarification, Andrea, okay. you're looking for, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, so having not been here, I just wanna note that I have no idea what that <laughs> section was reporting on. Um, and I don't know, um, you know if it's important to make that clearer so that people who weren't you can try to work on it, but it is going to be confusing because okay. they're basically titled almost the same thing. So I'll try to make it a little clearer. Okay. I'll do my best. Thanks. Anything else? Hey, just one comment on um, in section five under my name. So I know I brought up um, the UMass event that has now been canceled. I know we talked about it, it should be in the minutes, but the update is it has been canceled. So I don't know if it makes sense to remove it from the minutes or not. I think I wouldn't remove it from the minutes. Um, okay. We can just note it in, when you have updates today, note it there. Okay. You don't wanna cancel it from the minutes because you announced it. So. Yep, makes sense. Yep. All right, anyone else have changes to the minutes? Okay, we're ready to vote. I'll move to accept the minutes. Second. I'm sorry, who seconded? Stella. Stella. Okay. All right, and I'll have to give a roll call vote. So, um, Raghavan? Yes. Rose? Abstain, I think. <laughs> I was Breger. only there for part of it. Okay. Oh, I, <laughs> yes. I was only there for part of it, but I read the minutes and they look good to me. So I'll I'll vote. Okay. We need, we need a we need enough. <laughs> Roof? Yes. Selman? Yes. Allison? Yes. Goldner? Yes. And D. Yes. Okay. They would have easily passed. <laughs> It's not clear whether we can vote on it or not vote on it if we're here. So, yeah. All right. Um, do we have any um, attendees who would like to speak during public comment? Um, and if so, I ask that you um, keep your uh, your your comments short. We typically give three minutes, so I didn't know. If Anna, I'm on you meeting you. Thanks. I have to duck out, so I was wondering if I could give my quick oh. heads now, if that's okay. As, oh. And it can be public comment or not. I just, I don't want to miss it by accident. Okay. okay? Just so, so, okay, we're pausing public comment. Oh, no, no, it's fine. If, if there are other public comments, you can do those first. No, oh, all right. Thanks. And any other? Public want to speak right now? We'll see if we have time at the end, we will like um, offer another time. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, Anna, go ahead. Thanks, so just a quick update today. Uh, 
Council is meeting on Monday, um, but we will, this is our only meeting in July. So wanted to let you know about something that's coming up later in July. And I'm now actually, as I'm saying this out loud, think that Steve, probably I might be stealing your thunder a little bit. Um, so I apologize, Steve, if I am, you can just yell at me. Um, the residential rental bylaw review process. Um, so this is continuing to move through CRC. And I know that there are a lot of different ways to get at this topic, but on July 25th uh, at 7 p.m., there is going to be the first of many community forums around rental permitting. Um, and so if folks would like to come to that, it's an open meeting uh, there, then they'll, there will be uh, opportunities to both comment in person as well as um, they're gonna be using a community engagement tool to register agreement or disagreement with other speakers. So um, lots of opportunities to engage there. And if you want more information on that or to give, uh, to fill out, so far it looks like there's a survey, but there's gonna be a lot of other engagement opportunities around this. If you go to engageamherst.org backslash rentals, uh, they've created a page for input on the on the bylaw review. So it'd be great to get some, some solid uh, climate lens uh, comments in there as well, if, if folks are so inclined. Um, other than that, we are kind of cruising along and, um, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to take them. But that's the biggest thing that I think would uh, that I think per is pertaining to to y'all at this point. Cool. So if there are no questions, I'm going to remute. But if you if you think of any, please let me know. Okay, I don't see anyone's hand up for anything either, so. Um, I, I have another question on a, um, just following up on last, um, last meeting um, mm -hmm. from the, the notes, if you have any update on um, the um, capital inventory memo to finance committee that you wanted input on. Um, not yet. Let me, uh, I don't have any updates on that, but um, I guess once you've got, once you've settled on, I apologize, I was a minute late. Did you vote in a new chair? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so once you do that, I'll reach out to the new chair to um, try to get on an agenda. Uh, and I'm hoping that what we could do is have a, a really good discussion at this level. Um, and then I know that uh, Stephanie also has a, an inventory too. So we want to just, again, make sure we're not duplicating efforts um, or being redundant. So that's, that's my goal is to get on an agenda for y'all to really um, sit down and talk through, uh, talk through the, what would be beneficial to have uh, information on or what information would be beneficial to have. There we go. Okay. And um, also the, anything on the zero waste bylaw? Uh, it has not come before us yet. The plan, I believe that they're planning to bring it to the council on August 15th, but we have not seen it yet. Um, but it exists. And so it is not, it does not exist in a form that's been proposed to the council. Oh. But I, don't know, I don't know what, um, yeah. Does anyone remember if um, we already uh, submitted a statement of support for it um, when when the zero waste Amherst group presented it to us. I can answer that because you're on the list of people who have um, who've said you've endorsed it. So hopefully, yes, you did. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I believe you did. I think uh, I just don't know if the version that they're bringing to council is the same or not. If it uh, and I'll, I'll make sure to send that to y'all as soon as I see it. I, I haven't seen it from the sponsors yet. OK. And do you, um, will there be time between when? Yes, so it will have to go to committee. Um, and I believe it'll actually go to my committee, uh, which is town services. Not that we can't have input either way, but um, you'll get double the fun um, because it goes to, to TSO. So yes, there will absolutely, absolutely be plenty of opportunity. Um, here's what I think maybe a good process might be is if y'all want to find it. So I, I'll keep you appraised on it, but it will be in the council packet as far as I know on August 15th. So it's not there yet. There's nothing to find, but 
Um, if you want to read it and, and have questions for me, I don't know if I'll have answers, but then I can bring those questions forward um, or opinions on it. Um, once we get it, that would be really helpful. And I can bring those to council or to the committee, depending on where, what feels more appropriate to y'all. Does that sound okay? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, staff update. Um, we have to vote the chair and vice chair first. Do that next. Okay. So um, I think actually I'll kind of jump in for this part. If that's okay with you, Andra? Yes, thanks. Okay. So the first question is, are there any nominations? Would someone like to nominate another member or self-nominate themselves? Please raise your hand and I will acknowledge you. Uh, Lassie did raise his hand. Stephanie, oh, did you? I didn't see that, so. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Vasu. Yeah, I thought about it. Um, first off, thanks, Jesse, for bringing my name up last time. Um, and uh, I think, um, you know, after talking to Laura offline, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to do it and I'll do the best in the job that I can. Um, obviously leaning on the experts uh, in the committee. So um, I'm gladly willing to lead ECAC. Okay. So Raghavan, is there anyone else who would like to nominate another member or self-nominate? Please raise your hand. Okay. Without that, then I will ask for a voice vote and I'll go backwards. So um, this is a vote for Raghavan, um, Vasu Raghavan for chair. D? Yes, for sure. Goldner? Yes. Allison? Yes. Selman? Yes. Roof? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Rose? Yes. Raghavan? I'm not I'm saying yes. Okay. Yes, you can vote yes. You need to vote yes. for yourself. Yes. <laughs> well, you don't have so, to. <laughs> well, you don't have to, but you have to vote. <laughs> or I guess you could abstain, but that would be weird too. <laughs> so, um, so great. Excellent. So thank you, Vasu, for stepping up. We now have yeah. our Yeah, first. absolutely. Thank you. And thank with you. that, Vasu, you then get the reins of the meeting. <laughs> Actually, now that you are officially chair. Oh, so uh, now I take notes. <laughs> you're taking notes. Now, so, Andrew, you're back to taking notes. <laughs> Trade. Don't worry, I'll help you. <laughs> I'll help so, you. I'm also curious about nomination for vice chair. Right. So, that is your, your first, first task chair. as the chair <laughs> is to now ask for nominations for right. the vice chair. Okay. All right. Uh, any nominations for vice chair? Laurie? Yeah, as, as, as discussed last time and by email with uh, Vasu, I would be happy to be vice chair and help out where I can. Anybody else? Okay, right. I'll call the vote then. So we have Goldner nominated for vice chair. And I will call you by last name. D? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Aldner? Allison? Yes. Selman? <laughs> I'll, I'll go to Roof. <laughs> I have a, a muffin and I have a conflict of interest. No. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Roof? Yes. Breger? Yes. Rose? Yes. Regavan? Yes. All right. Congratulations, Laurie. You are vice right. chair. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks, Laurie. All right, uh, let's go to staff updates, Stephanie. Sure. Um, so there are a lot of <laughs> a lot of things as usual. Um, so right now we are um, trying to move forward the. Uh, Community Choice Aggregation, we are now Valley Green Energy. We had our first meeting with the consultant, which is very exciting. Um, so we're 
figuring out what our next steps will be and how we move forward as sort of three communities working, working on the same initiative. However, there will be outreach in each community that the consultant will work on with each community. Um, and I just, and I'm sure Andra will, and Duane will also support, I really see that there's a role for this committee in doing community outreach about this. Um, for this committee especially. So um, we'll have more information as we move forward with that. And I'm sure, um, well, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I'm hoping Andra will, um, and I can both help out with that piece. So um, that's one thing. Then another is that um, I will be sending you documents. Um, there was uh, an ARPA request for funding uh, several months ago that I put together for uh, just over $500,000 for sustainability initiatives. And I did mention this to the group. I had outlined um, sort of four target areas based on the CARP um, and they were all approved by the town manager. So they are now publicly accessible and I will send you those documents for more discussion at the next meeting because I would like to speak with you all about here are the initiatives that are gonna be moving forward and these are approved and they are funded so they will be moving forward. I think there's a role for you all to play in some of these. One of them is um, a residential heat pump. So I do want to talk about that with all of you and sort of developing that, what it could look like, um, how we might move that forward. It does involve hiring someone to sort of take the reins for that. So um, I will be involved, but maybe not as much as I typically am. So. I think it's an opportunity again for this committee to work on helping to develop it, but also when they implement also doing some outreach around that issue as well. So that's one of the initiatives. Um, another thing that was funded through APRA was um, securing two fellows, it says interns, but really they're going to be two fellows. One will be doing a building inventory analysis and the other one will be um, doing our greenhouse gas emissions update, inventory update. So those applications go in in December and that would be for next summer. So next summer at this time, we would have hopefully the two fellows working on those two initiatives. Um, the building inventory I'm hoping will be a fairly broad and extensive look at like life cycle and that kind of thing. Some of the information that we don't currently have that we're looking for. So again, this will be an opportunity for you to weigh on, in on the things that we might need for for that. You had a question, Steve. Is that town buildings or all buildings in town? Oh, town buildings. This is municipal. This will be in a okay. municipal building inventory. Um, Lori. Um, can you just explain what you mean by heat pump initiative? What exactly is that? What would it be? Um, can we get to it more at the next meeting? I just don't want to take up a lot of time only because we'll be talking about it at the next meeting. I'll have more information and um, all right. You know, I just didn't want to get into it right now. Um, because there's some more, there, you know, there'll be more in depth and conversation about it. Okay. Um, hey, Stephanie, just curious on the community outreach portion. How does, how does that happen? I mean, are, are we doing different, I, I guess, what is the best media or communication channel to improve outreach? Because I see different, I, I mean, the library uh, committee had uh, you know, an Excel file with all their ideas. And then I know Anna talked about outreach as well. Is there a best practice on how we can improve outreach? Um, a best practice on improving outreach, I think is different than a best practice. <laughs> you know, I think in terms of improving outreach, we can sort of talk about what the best practices have been and used and how we can improve on that. But I would say that we have some other, um, just from what I heard from Anna, it sounds like the town is already starting to move with some different uh, modes of outreach and input. Um, so I would say that, again, this is a, a bigger conversation that isn't part of it, shouldn't be part of the update so much. I think we can save this for, you know, um, when we talk about these initiatives or when we talk about um, outreach and education, we can sort of bring this to the to that conversation. But I, I think I hear you and I, I there isn't necessarily, I mean, there's been a standard way we do things, but I think that's changing even within the town. We, all, you know, we now have a DEI director in place um, in diversity and inclusion. So I think that that's going to be equity and inclusion. So I think that's going to be um, a new 
point of contact and a new source of guidance for how we do things. So um, that's a new opportunity. Um, so, um, so I'm sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked there. Um, I was talking about the two interns, what they're going to be doing. Um, and then there were other, a couple of other uh, efforts that were funded. One is more expansion of the mobile market to add um, funding for a few seasons, but that's sort of, that is happening later. Um, all of this funding uh, sort of is available beginning next fiscal year, but it has to be all expended by, I think, 2026, which shouldn't be a problem. So some of this programming has a timeline to it. I will be sending you all of that documentation for your next meeting packet. I just wanted to sort of give you an overview and also explain that some of these things have been in the works while we've been having meetings and sort of talking about things like, you know, some kind of uh, outreach program. But, you know, I haven't been able to talk about them until the town manager approved all of this. So I apologize that it seems like we weren't doing anything, but I was. And it was a little frustrating for me to not be able to share because my from where I sit and now that these things are approved I think it's an opportunity for me to bring some of this to you to get your input on things like developing RFPs looking for consultants for you know the heat pump program I think there's an opportunity um, for working you know to sort of identify what are some of the parameters we want the fellows to look for when they're creating the um, you know, the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So all, the, all of those kinds of things. There's a lot of opportunities for you to weigh in. Just don't overwhelm me all at once. <laughs> so we can sort of pick them off, you know, one at a time. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to tell you is that I did have a meeting today with um, a representative from a company called Utilimark. And we're talking with them about doing a greenhouse gas emissions inventory for our vehicle fleet. And as part of that, one of the things we're asking for is for them to look at, um, uh, you know, the life cycle of, you know, the life of a car and like, at what point will we need to trade that out for an electric vehicle when we have the opportunity, if there's existing technology that could actually be installed on, on existing vehicles in the interim until we can trade that out for when an all EV becomes available. You know, for instance, there's nothing for dump trucks right now. You know, dump trucks are not EVs. We don't have any EVs, but there, there is, I believe, some technology for anti-idling that could be installed that could sort of help the efficiency on some level and emissions on some level. So that is um, something also that will be um, provided for through the ARPA funding. And um, sorry, I'm trying to think. The last thing is also the community dashboard. We had talked for a while about having a community dashboard about this, you know, about sustainability and climate goals and all of that. We have funding to do that. So that will be happening as well. So we will have that presence. Um, so I will send all that information to you. I also have the final solar assessment report for those specific buildings. This isn't the big, wide, broad community solar assessment. This is the narrow one that was identified that had that was much more targeted information in terms of also um, identifying um, uh, costs and um, and revenue generating opportunities for. Um, some solar installations with battery storage. So that's all laid out. It's very in-depth and involved and specific. And I will get that to you for the next meeting um, for discussion or at least for review. So that's, I think that's all I have. Nice work, Stephanie. Thanks, Jeff. That's very exciting. That's, that's a lot. Um, and, and I, and I, I just want to also say, I, I'm going to err on the exciting to hear of the progress side as compared to the, why didn't you tell us sooner, which you couldn't do anyway, side of things. It's, it's great. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's great to know that things are happening. That's wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. I, I think we talked about this last year where we were talking about how do we spend or what are some of the actions we can take from our CARP uh, for 
the ARPA funding that we have, and we never really got around what they were going to be until this is the first time I'm hearing. So I, I guess my question is, how do we make sure that we can also provide some input, Stephanie, because it seems like you're working a lot and is there added value that we can add in the future uh, to just to make sure that we're helping you out here? I think Laura, um, Laura and I, what was appropriate at that time was for me to check in with Laura. This is something that the town manager specifically recommends. So it wasn't really something um, that we we felt that it should come from staff as looking to the CARP for implementation. I mean, because yes, you all um, were the ones who, you know, heavily contributed to the development of the CARP. Implementation is really more on the town. It's not something you all can sort of over, you know, sort of check in and make sure the town is doing what it's supposed to do. But the actual implementation really is the responsibility of the town manager. So as staff, I was tasked with coming up with things. And that's why I went specifically to the CARP to pull those items out, which is what I always intended mm -hmm. in the first place. That was always what it was meant to be, a, a guideline, a guidance document for us. Um, so I think, you know, there may be different kinds of initiatives, but, um, and there may be a way in which I can weigh in, but I can't say that with, with ARPA funding specifically, that's something that it's necessarily going to be under the purview of the committee to recommend specifically. You know what I mean? I think you always make recommendations and those things were certainly in my mind in putting this all together, like the dashboard, the pump program, the inventories, the, you know, all of those things were things that had been discussed several times. So it's in there. Your, your influence is in there, I guess, is a very long winded way of what I'm trying to say. Sure. Okay. All right, anything else for Stephanie? All right, let's uh, go to ECAC member updates. Steve. Bingo. Okay, I'm, uh, if Anna, yeah, Anna's still here. So yeah, let me say just a few things about our the work I've been doing on the rental property energy efficiency and um, that, that dovetails nicely with what both what Stephanie and Anna are working on. Um, tomorrow, this town council CRC is having another meeting to discuss, I guess, sort of the nearly final draft revised rental uh, registration bylaw. And most of that is not around energy efficiency. Most of it's a bunch of other issues they want to deal with. Uh, as I've reported before, we did get them to add some language that allows the town to ask on the annual permit application basic information about a property. Um, it, it's not exactly specified what that would be. That's questions that we would have to develop, but it would likely be fairly straightforward information that building owners could answer, like the year built of the building, the, the square footage, the fuel sources used for heating the building, whether electricity or natural gas or whatnot, and a few other questions. So, so that's good. We're at that step to start that data collection. Um, we have been continuing to explore other ideas and there's sort of a swirl, at least in my head, a swirling bunch of options that overlap, um, all of which have some pros, some great advantages, but all of which also have some disadvantages. And I will just take a brief moment here to kind of see if I can summarize them. And I would love to talk more with Stephanie and Anna about your thoughts, because I think we're, we're working on potentially some similar things. Um, so one category of idea that we have is to ask the building owners to provide in more information about their rental properties. Um, beyond basic information like year built and the square footage and the fuels used, we could consider asking more detailed building information like the type of roof and wall construction, the amount of insulation, whether they have an air leakage exchange rate value, um, these would be harder for the building owners to do. They would probably have to hire someone to help them with this. Um, so that's one possibility. It would give us help us identify the rental properties that are most in need of energy efficiency improvements. But there's a bigger cost for the owners to get that data. 
In addition, or instead of, another option is to ask owners to provide actual energy use for buildings. Um, this is probably feasible only for, well, as I understand it, for larger units where the data can be aggregated. There are privacy concerns if it's a one or two family place. Um, and part of the problem is owners, if the tenants pay the bills, the owners might not have any way to get the actual energy use. Um, however, owners of larger apartment complexes, and I'm not quite sure what the cutoff is, it might be five or six or somewhere around there, it's possible to get that data, for, at least from Eversource, through a program that the EPA runs, which is called um, Portfolio Manager. And that's used for commercial buildings. Um, and as a technique where basically you, you, you create a list and then Eversource will actually feed the data into your portfolio manager um, online program. And you don't have to do, you know, have to type in all the numbers yourself. But again, that's only for larger units. Um, another possibility we've talked about is asking building owners to submit some sort of energy efficiency improvement plan. And we haven't gotten very far as to what that might entail, but it would simply be asking them, what do you know about the efficiency of your rental properties and what are you doing to improve them? Um, probably this wouldn't have enforcement behind it, but it would at least hopefully get them to start thinking about it. So that's kind of one category, asking building owners to provide more information about their properties to help us understand which buildings, uh, rental buildings we might want to focus on. Another category would be asking for inspections of some sort um, of the properties. This could be a town staff inspection with a customized checklist. Um, there's pros and cons to that. Um, and they're, they're in a, or instead of that, there are standardized um, sort of official recognized inspections with scores. There's the home energy score or the HERS home energy rating score or the DOE has a free system called the BEAS, Building Energy Assessment Score. All of these are assessing the building, not the actual energy use. But the nice thing is, is that they provide a score so you can be then can compare different buildings. Um, I've talked to a few contractors in the area, home, home performance contractors that do these, and they say it's not very useful for existing buildings because you have to it's disruptive, it's expensive, and you have to make quite a few assumptions about the um, uh, insulation levels and window efficiency and things like that. Um, another possibility that we've just started thinking about is for the inspection might be to encourage or possibly require rental properties to sign up for a mass save assessment. And mass save is the program that's of course is supported by the utilities and it's often the first step, or it is the first step in many cases for further incentives. And there are different assessments for single family homes, for small rentals, and for larger rentals. There's different programs for each of those. Um, I know a number of us have not been too terribly impressed with the residential assessments that we've experienced. And I'm trying to find out if the assessments for larger rental properties might be more thorough um, and, um, and more useful. Also, I have no idea whether Mass Save would look favorably upon a town requiring a thousand plus buildings to sign up for those assessments that might overwhelm them. But it could be done, you know, phased over several years. So, so that's a different inspection uh, a system. So there's a couple of different ways that we could potentially require inspections that the, presumably the building owners would have to pay for and have done um, at least over some sort of a time save. There's other options that we've talked about that might include um, required energy use disclosures. So for example, if a rental property gets one of those scores, then we could and other communities might have done this, require the rental property to disclose what the, the score is or perhaps what the energy use is to potential renters. Um, so that's a way of sort of bringing to light what the actual utility costs would be. Um, then the, but, but, but other, some communities have gone further. They've had, uh, after getting a score, an energy use score of some sort, they can will begin to require buildings that fall below a certain threshold to, in, to upgrade. 
And there are usually caps on how much they have to spend per unit. Um, and sometimes there are caps on whether uh, on the payback, they don't have to spend money if it's more than a eight year payback. Um, so Burlington, Vermont is doing that, um, that sort of program in a few other communities. Um, there's other disclosures. Sometimes there's time of sale disclosures that, that, that are also used for residential buildings, uh, energy use at time of disclosure at time of sale, but that's not very frequent. There's not a lot of turnover. Um, so that, that's not so relevant to the rental properties themselves. Um, so we're, we are still trying to assess and we're a little bit stuck. There's all these great ideas. Many of them have a great, but they all have some drawbacks. And I guess what we need to do is to speak more with town staff and perhaps other community members about what would be feasible and what would be effective from this long list of possibilities. Um, so that's what we're working on. And I'd love to have a chance to chat with uh, Stephanie at, at some point and Anna too about your ideas on the sort of this broad topic. Yes, Stephanie. Hey. Steve, can you just um, clarify uh, when you say we are working, uh, who we are? <laughs> well, we could be anybody. Right now, it's me primarily. Um, we had a, mess, a meeting a couple weeks ago. Jesse participated, um, Chris Riddle, a, a local retired architect, and then Cora, who's been our RMI sponsored um, coach that started out with the building electrification program and she is continuing to help is very interested in helping develop some sort of ideas for this rental property efficiency program but i would love this there's, there's kind of a lot of research to do and and um, looking into different programs i would love some additional help and i'm part of that initiative too yes yeah, sorry yes yeah, definitely okay. involved yeah. i'm just sort of a of course staff everybody person. knows I mean... you're always involved <laughs> and, and i would love to help i mean if there's research that needs to be done if there's you know programs I'm, I'm trying to do that anyway and slowly learning my way through these things so i would love to be more involved in something like that it's a little bit hard for me to figure out how to get involved in all these existing things so um <laughs> yes Dwayne. oh stephanie first and then when i just had a quick um steve i wanted to suggest that um we could maybe schedule a meeting with some of the um, inspectors or at least even the lead inspector just to talk about some of these different options because I think I gave some feedback at the last meeting that yeah. we all had, but it would be helpful, I think, for him to be involved as well. So I'm happy to schedule that at your convenience. Okay, yeah, that could be in August. I'll be away until about the beginning of August. Okay. Just two quick, quick thoughts, Steve, which this is great work and really exciting. Um, one is um, a, a disclosure, disclosure question could, could be just has the building had a mass save audit? Um, and if it has, um, what were, um, you know, disclose what the um, measures taken were <laughs> uh, uh, as sort of to put some more robust information in, into how the building might behave. Uh, but then I was also, um, you know, it, it, there seems to be a bifurcation in terms of consumer needs um, here in terms of renter needs uh, and fairness to some extent, in, in my mind at least, of, of whether the renters are paying for the utilities or the building owner is. I mean, if the building owner is, it's kind of his or her business decision and, and it's kind of, you know, I'm not sure if we can pry into their decision making uh, with regard to what to do, but if it's, if the renters are paying um, it just seems only f fair to me, at least, um, that, um, you know, similar to how we require cars to demonstrate, you know, show how many miles per gallon they get, renters, you know, it's not, uh, you know, to avoid sort of the buyer beware, uh, you know, to, to disclose to in some way, require some disclosure of what the, um, what the costs are uh, to, or to, to, for heating electric for the, for the, uh, for the, um, for the space. Um, in absence of, of sort of that government action and maybe beyond the scope of, of this issue with the uh, town council uh, and, and, and sort of regulations is, you know, maybe there's a, um, uh, a public side to this where there could be some method by which um, renters in, in, in Amherst have a website where they can disclose how much it costs them to, to uh, um, uh, 
rent, uh, you know, pay for utilities in different spaces. And that way, the, the owners are, are pressured in some ways to um, um, make it as cheap as possible for their renters. That raises all sorts. I, it's a, it, it could be voluntary, so I don't think there's a privacy issue. Uh, but um, it, it does raise questions about how that's policed and how renters report their information when they don't know their way around utility bills very well, or whether they're talking about gallons or therms or or dollars. Uh, so there could be some some data quality issues, but it's, it's just an idea. Yeah, great. Um, that prompts me to re to to report that. Um, Stephanie, we got the Empower grant, and that's working with Family Outreach of Amherst to connect with renters in town, and that is hopefully getting underway. And hopefully, yes, that we want to really learn from their program what renters in town need and want in terms of that, and whether there might be some that would be willing to participate in their program that looks at their actual energy use in some format. Um, the other thing that reminded me of many times in other communities, these programs have exceptions. So if the tenant, if the, if the landlord pays the utility, then they could be exempt from some of these requirements. Um, or if the building in question is built to a recent building code, um, particularly perhaps a stretch code, then they are exempt from some of these uh, um, inspection requirements or other requirements. What, what we've been told by some legal analysis is you want to offer a sort of a number of different pathways to compliance, because in Massachusetts, local communities cannot do anything that dictates or um, would build or conflicts with building codes. And insulation is something that is directly in the building code, so the town of Amherst could not require certain levels of insulation. And in fact, I believe there's a federal law that supersedes any local law about efficiency apply of, of appliances. So Amherst could not require Energy Star require, um, appliances or uh, appliances of a certain efficiency. But other communities have with a series of different pathways that might include increasing the efficiency of appliances or adding insulation or doing air sealing. If you have multiple pathways to compliance, sometimes the that's more viable um, way of avoiding the preemption of um, state and federal laws. Yeah, Steve, my, my comment, I, I think this is uh, very important for, for us, right? I think the um, buildings is number one in terms of emissions. So uh, I think this data is gonna be important, but it's, it's also important to get it right. Uh, I think maybe we should also consider leading and lag, lagging indicators in terms of Okay, we, we have this data for now, and then three to five years from now, we want to go back and do an assessment. Can we use existing data? So something to consider. Um, you know, is the future you know smart meters where we easily get the data in a single platform? Right? I, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Is yeah. just. Yeah, I've been working for uh, almost two years now trying to get the data that the town has collected from the rental permit applications and from the building cards, but they don't mesh together well. Um, and the, the um, building cards aren't always updated or they're confusing. It's not clear if there was an addition built or an existing space was upgraded, for example. Um, and the combined data set we have is very incomplete for the larger apartment complexes. So it's hard to make significant comparisons. But yeah, getting better data is good. I'm sort of, my personal approach is I don't want to spend years just collecting the data and then think about what we're doing. I'm hoping we can do some things now to at least encourage building owners to begin moving forward. And, and also, we want to also find some carrots and um, help connect building owners to the incentives that exist. So that'd be one advantage in my mind to going with the mass save program because that def definitely connects owners with the current incentives. Um, but we also wanna look at the programs like the PACE, the commercial PACE program and others. And there's a, a program for, called Mass Lean, L-E-A-N, which helps buildings that have a high proportion of low income people in them, helps with incentivized energy efficiency improvement work. Um, so we. That's another task I'm kind of work on to sort of try to find out these different agencies that might be able to help 
Um, some of us know about Block Power that worked, I think, in Ithaca, and there's some other programs that are similar to that that um, we might be able to tap into. Um, All in Energy is a company that I think it's in Massachusetts that also helps helps kind of connect the contractors, the owners, and the incentives, um, which, as, as some of us know, is sort of tends to be a difficult thing to bring together. So, so Steve, that's also something that I'm very interested in and have actually been starting to work on a little bit. So um, okay. sometimes we'll talk. Yeah, let's um, think just, about how, think how about, we might be able to think. split up these different research tasks and yeah. um, connect and, and, and work together. I've actually been speaking with Block Power a bit lately about a lot of different things. I'm slowly learning how they work. <laughs> okay, I'm all done with that. Thanks, Steve. Any other updates? Yeah. Um, Laura sent me a great document that I don't know if anybody else has read. Uh, it's from RMI, it's investing in climate smart transportation on the America is all in website. Some people are nodding their heads. Have other people read this? It it's basically an overview of of IIJA, the bill that passed last um, last fall of new funding as it affects transport um, and electrifying transport, and a lot of the there's like 32 pages that are probably just just um, background that a lot of people here are aware of, but there's a really, really, really handy chart on the last two pages that I wanna make sure everybody knows about because that's a really nice chart of the program, the amount of money, whether it's a new uh, or existing fund, like what kind of grant funding it is and who it's available to. And there's links to all of the different programs. So that includes things like um, like electrical, electric vehicle workplace charging program for municipal employees, school bus electrification, cooperative purchasing between climate mayors, um, school bus stuff, just a lot of a lot of a lot of transport transport electrification and decarbonization stuff. Um, so just a heads up, if anybody's interested in that, I thought about pulling out that chart and sending it to Stephanie, but I didn't get around to it. But if that's of interest to more people, I can I can do that for the next meeting. Yeah, let's do that, Stella. I think it's an area that we haven't really talked about much. So I think yeah. we need to talk about. It also includes things like like things that I haven't even thought about at all, though maybe more like transporty people have, like street lights and, and that kind of thing. Okay, thanks, Stella. Any other ECAC updates? ECAC member updates. All right, I guess the only thing I have is the, the UMass event that I uh, mentioned last time um, that is now canceled. So still trying to figure out uh, what we could do with the Hitchcock Center. So it's um, ongoing. Might move it out to later in the fall. They do have uh, some programs at the Hitchcock Center, um, fireside chat, and we're trying to get more information around that, see how, UMass can be there and help support and also be more aware. Okay, um, let's move on to the next topic, engagement with landowners, developers, and businesses. I don't know who had this. Um, that was something I had offered to do last time. Um, I got a name from Stephanie about a week ago now and reached out on Monday, haven't heard back yet. This is Ron. Um, who has, I don't remember the last name, Stephanie. Um, uh, Lavertier. Yeah, who has, who has made some, uh, put in charging stations and this sort of thing. Um, so I, I, I don't, this really, I don't have anything to report. So um, I haven't heard back from him yet. I'm going to keep trying to do things like that as the opportunities arise. So Stephanie, if there's anybody else, 
I should be in contact with. I'll keep sending out emails. I didn't do it right away last week because it was just a busy week, but now I'm officially on vacation. So I'm actually sitting here in my apartment in, in uh, uh, I don't know if you can see the water out there. <laughs> I'm in Providence, um, enjoying the uh, view of the, of, the, uh, of the swamp behind the house I rented, <laughs> of the tidal slough, I think it is. <laughs> Um, so I have lots of time to do stuff like this. Um, Thanks, Laura. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have the solar bylaw working group update. Yes. Yep. And I can. Uh, uh, but before we go on, um, I, I think that there's more to the engagement with landover owners, developers, businesses uh, okay. to discuss besides what Laurie was doing? I, yeah, there were a lot of questions too that I hope we would discuss. So. Yeah, um, Don, that was something that we talked about you were interested in and wonder if there's, you know, some informal meetings that we could start having that would help us move ahead. Yeah, it is something that I'm interested in. And I, I meant to reach out to Lori and I apologize. I spent two and a half weeks of the last four weeks in Maine. Um, so, uh, but now I'm not on vacation, but I do have a, a quite a bit of time. And I, I think it's wise to start out with Stephanie's recommendation um, and then move from there to some of the other um, kind of major residential uh, individuals in, in, uh, in town. Um, I'm looking out my window at Archipelago's new building on Spring Street. Um, and, uh, and I certainly know both Kyle and Dave really well. Um, and I'm happy to reach out to them. I'm happy to try to, I mean, I'd love some suggestions on outreach. This is all part of that outreach conversation um, that um, Vasu was talking about and that Stephanie's been talking about generally. But I do have the time and the energy now. So I'm, I'm delighted and I can connect with you, Lori, by email or otherwise. Um, and to be fair, Don, I meant to contact you too, and I just got caught up in other things. So I promised my wife I wouldn't even look at my computer while I was in Maine. And yeah, and that's right. And Andra knows my wife, so she understands. Um, yeah, and I think that's why I asked the question earlier on the best approach to outreach and I've seen different ways to do it. And there's one or a couple of approaches that Stephanie that you've seen has worked best. I, I think it's important to relay that to this committee here so we can take that information because we've talked about it at length about outreach over the last few meetings. Yeah, I also think this is sort of a smooth transition between what Steve was talking about earlier and Jesse, the efforts to get information on buildings and to put the, the disclosure bylaws or whatever is going to get put in place in place and the outreach that comes sort of on the far end of that, right, on the downstream end of that. It sort of one goes right into the other. In some sense, the outreach starts while you're doing the development of these, these bylaws, right? Um, so how do we leverage that effort, right? How do we tack on to that? And um, having a, uh, I, I was just looking up the report that Stella mentioned, um, it might be nice to have a chart somewhere that, I mean, I know going through this with my own house now, I know it's very difficult to figure out where you find the different programs you need to apply for loans, for grants, for, it'd be nice to have a chart somewhere where you could just go and click on the links, depending on what your situation is and who you are and what you're looking for. So if that doesn't already exist somewhere, we might consider putting it together or just linking to it if it exists somewhere, finding a way to advertise that. Yes, sir. I don't understand why there's never any outreach of any kind at playgrounds, because there's like these, at Groff, there's a board, Kendrick, there's nothing. 
but you have like tons and tons of parents who like by definition are deeply invested in the future like sitting there supervising when they could be like i don't know reading town documents on this you know what i mean like it seems like a great place to flyer and there's never anything so just a thought especially since it's the summer and it's COVID and a lot of people with kids like don't want to go inside places. Yeah. Like it's just kind of surprising to me that there's never flyering of any kind at parks and playgrounds. My hey, daughter Kevin. asked what that kiosk is for at Groff Park. And I said, oh, it's for important notices. And it's like, oh, nothing important going on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's never any notices. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's sad, very well built kiosk with nothing on it if you made waterproof flyers then then people could read them while they were supervising their kids in that wonderful splash park yeah exactly <laughs> you have like just so many people sitting around like trying to figure out what to do but which actually reminds me i had a question on uh, last week for stephanie um if all the events can get added to the amherst page um that way hitchcock center is adding the events that they have, some of the other advocacy groups are adding, it's all in one place. So people know what are some of the key events that are happening. I don't know if you had a chance to talk to anybody. Um, no, I didn't talk to Brianna about that. I mean, there is a community calendar section of the of the town's website. So all the, the events are listed, people submit them. You can submit your own. It doesn't have to go through the town to post something. I What you're wanting is specifically a sort of sustainability I, it sounds like checkbox yeah there, there's no checkbox for sustainability i think it just has community or general events or whatever right because those are the broad categories yeah. so i would say that to me the dashboard will be a place where we can do something like that that would make more sense um i i just don't think they i don't the way the that is structured you know that category of boards and committees community those are very um uh very general sort of categorizations <coughs> it's not i don't think it makes sense to sort of have sustainability live right there for sustainability events uh, i can i i will talk to brie again but i i just think you know to me that doesn't seem like the best place to put it i know why but i think it's you know that's kind of like the official postings for meetings like that's kind of like the official site. When I post our meetings, that's the official place they go. And community events, that's where people go to find the information. But I think maybe they can do it under sustainability as like a whole other tab. I don't know, I'll ask again. Okay. I'll follow up. I'm sorry about that. I just didn't get a chance. Yeah, no worries. But going back to outreach, Stephanie, do you recommend that I connect with the bid? I'm sure they've done a lot of outreach programs and um, IDE, um, Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, that group. Can I connect with them? Do you think they would be the right people? Certainly. I mean, you know, always the bid and the chamber are excellent ways to get in touch with the business community, which is always hard. Um, so, you know, Laurie and Don, that goes for you too. And I know, Don, you've already mentioned it, but they're always like the two best resources. I would also say that now that we have, um, you know, our DEI director is new, but we also have community participation officers uh, located in the town manager's office. Um, there, there are three staff members who comprise that, that team. Um, they're good people to connect with. Uh, Brianna, who's the communications director, Angela Mills, who's the executive assistant to the town manager, and Jen Moyston, who is now the assistant DEI director, um, are all the community participation officers. So they have a direct line to sort of doing some of this outreach. And our um, two out of the three are Amherst residents, longtime Amherst residents. So they really know people in town um, quite extensively. So uh, probably some kind of, you know, if you want me to set up a meeting for you, I'd be happy to, um, and I'd like to be part of that just because I think that's really good information for me as well as as the staff person to this committee to hear as well. So happy to to set something up if you would like. Yeah, please do. I think that'd be great. And Laurie, I don't know if you want to be part of it as well. Yes, yeah, so that was a meeting between who and who. Sorry. 
Um, that would be with uh, the, I would try to get the community participation officers, I think probably are the best folks to start out with. Um, the DEI director is brand new. I think, you know, um, I don't officially know her pronouns. I think they're they, she um, is probably very overwhelmed right now because they just got on board and I've seen them in a lot of meetings already. So I'd, I'd hold off on that, but the assistant DEI director is part of the community participation officers um, group. So that would be the, the people that I would suggest we meet with. And what is the topic of the meeting? I'm a little confused as to what, uh, are we going to be bringing information for them? Are we going to be seeking information from them? Um, it's outreach, but what, what does that mean in this context? It's, it's, it's their approach and how do they go about, because the bid has done a lot of outreach before. So it's just learning from them and seeing how we can oh, implement that. Just learning about how they, how their approach to outreach works. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I would be interested in that for sure. Okay. I have to warn us again too about the whole, you know, subcommittee thing. So, you know, if it's two or more members and you're working on the same initiative, I just have to post it is all. This, so. this, is, this is a meeting with the chair and vice chair. Correct. So does I that- just re I'm realizing people are in new roles. So I'm just gonna have to get you to that. No, that's fine. I'll so, just, I'm just gonna make sure, but yes, Laurie, I'll make sure you're- yeah, so, so the other thing I wonder, though, is should we not have, I mean, one of the things that's going through my head is, you know, say I reach out to people in the business community even about, uh, I have to bring something, if I'm going to do outreach, I need to have something that I'm bringing to them, uh, right? And I think we lack that yet. So um, it might be better to decide what what is the goal of this outreach, right? What are we trying to to do because I don't think that's simple. <laughs> well, when you're talking, I think Vasu was trying to get at just what are some general strategies. For instance, okay. I would say when we worked on the MVP community outreach, um, you know, we we had um, food, we had childcare, right? Um, we had interpretation. All those things were part of the outreach. So those are cut some outreach strategies that sort of help to right. ensure a more diverse and equitable engagement. And th right. that meeting, those two meetings especially, I think in my entire career were the two most diverse meetings that I've ever been involved in. In fact, we had people that, I, I think I didn't really know anybody. I think I maybe knew one or two people who showed up. So it's those types of approaches. And I think that's what Vosu was sort of getting at. Um, also, I think, you know, there were some things that Anna said earlier about reactions to speakers. Um, I hadn't heard that before. So that seems to me, to my ears, that's like a new tool that the town may be using as an approach. So um, things like that. We also did um, outreach uh, piggybacking on um, programs that the community participation officers had planned at um, some of the <clears throat> multifamily um, developments, like um, you know, scarecrow making, at, at you know, in the fall, right? And and we just went with easel and um, collected feedback on what people were needing around transportation and buildings. And, yeah, that was part of that outreach was specifically following up on outreach the committee had done um, initially. And there was already sort of a format for what the committee was looking for. So Darcy went with an easel and basically used the same format. So it was already kind of an established outreach. So she did show up with something in that, in that particular case. It wasn't just kind of general. Yeah, and I, Laurie, I think we may want to consider that as well, right? I think, you know, maybe bring a few examples and ask them how would they approach it. Um, so I'll, I'll think of something as well. Uh, I think it's a good idea to bring some questions to them. Oh, yes, Jessica. 
I, I think in general, just to get a little, maybe to what Lori's talking about too, something that's always going through my mind uh, for this group is um, a little bit of, and I, and I still don't, I still can't come up with a better word, but like branding and words like branding and elevator pitch. Um, I think I would love, I, I think it'd be great and I could maybe try to do this or maybe just as we all move forward, just like any of these things that we go forward with, if, if we are all saying somewhat the, of the same thing about what we are doing, how we're doing it, what we're trying to do, um, in general, there, my sense is we are still figuring out what we are and maybe other people know better than I do, but I, oftentimes don't feel like I have like the pithy statement and maybe it's just, I got to go back and read the charge again. Um, but I just throwing it out there. There's something, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to derail this conversation, but I do feel like if we're going to embark on another round of formal outreach to have some clarity of, what are we who are we reaching out to and why right and 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 so when any of us talk to anyone the messaging should be clear and consistent and repetitive um and i'm not sure if we're ready to do that i just want to throw that out as an ultimate goal like sort of like as we if, if we're going to embark on something it, i think it has to have that exercise coming first yeah. andra and then stop I feel like we have several good beginnings on this. We have talked about this. And what we really need is a subgroup to put legs on it and bring it back to the whole committee for us to um, dig into. And um, yeah, public meeting but an action-oriented subgroup to make this happen. We've been talking about it for years. Yes, yeah, so. How's this, Jesse? So I think it's a question. I think the question is, how can the town support you in your climate repair goals? Because that's like helpful. That's information that assumes expertise and it's something concrete that we can like take in our advisory capacity to the town manager. Like, because people have stuff, people have stuff. So if we ask people like, how can the town support you in your climate repair goals? And they're like, well, like I would really like to find a, a way to like decarbonize my house or I would really like to take the bus but it doesn't come by my house or like, like that's the information that I think we aggregate and then communicate. And so, I don't know, I think that that's the outreach question. I don't know how other people feel about that, but I think framing it, I think framing it um, in a hopeful way. And I think framing it in a way that assumes, um, assumes like some prior knowledge because I think that exists and like assumes good intent and then, and then in a way that like can gather like concrete information that we can bring to the town manager. Yes, Lori. Sorry, did you call on me? You raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I had I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about what Andra just suggested about having a group come together to come out with this this. Um, I guess these goals, right, of what we're what we're trying to outreach around, right? And I think it's more than one. There are different audiences, and I think that there are different tasks, right? Yes, there's what Stella just mentioned: the going to different groups with questions about what can we do to help you make it happen. Um, but there's also just getting the information out there. Um, and it's the information we need to get is different for different groups. And what I was gonna suggest is that maybe instead of putting a 
subgroup together right away to work on all of this that like, for example, I would be willing to go and try to put together uh, a list of resources for business owners and, and landowners who might want to convert. Where do they start? And that's a list I would want them to know about then, right? I'd want to get some information to them as well as some information from them about what else could we do? Is this enough or is there more? Is there something different that you need? Um, so that would be the sort of, the, that would be what I would be bringing, what we would be bringing to the conversation would be the list of resources. Um, and then asking for their input as well. Um, so I, I think we have a lot of the pieces of this, right? Gatu, I think you've been working on the, the re outreach to individuals and homeowners, and rent renters, I think, right? Um, and and oh, I, right. no, sorry, no, oh, you've right. you gone fuzzy again. <laughs> it's, it must be six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Not renters. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're still, still that's I'm getting feedback. Oh, there we go. That's better. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I can, I can start doing some research and maybe also talk to Steve and Don about this separately. I'll, maybe I'll make a list and then send it around and see what can be added to it of resources that are available already. Um, I know one of the biggest problems I've been having, I, I did actually talk to Block Power last week about what their pitch is. <laughs> And I have to say, I wasn't all that impressed. They're, they're, um, they realize that making these conversions is going to cost money. And their pitch is twofold. One that, well, you know, uh, heat pumps are so much more comfortable than other forms of heating. They nice, comfortable, constant temperature, which I think some people would debate. So that's, that's um, interesting. Some people like the ability to change things quickly. Um, <laughs> or to have very hot air coming out of their vents. Um, and the other was the long-term saving. And essentially if the world is going this way, you're gonna to have to do this anyway. So they have a standard pitch that they give, um, but I'm hoping we can maybe do a little, I, I think the key thing is to try to find the people who want to do this anyway, who know this is the right thing to do and worry about that more than coming up with a really strong pitch. Cause I think the pitch is always gonna be hard. <laughs> It's going to be hard, right? Because you have to you have to get people to buy into your way of thinking about the world, and that's hard. Um, yeah. I'll Jesse stop. and then Andra. I just I want to quickly say that I the I really agree with and appreciate the responses to to the sort of disruptive maybe comment that I made. I think Andra is quite right. We we're, we're almost there, it's close. We've talked about it a lot, we've touched on it a lot more, I think, suggesting this is not like, we're not like wildly departing from what we're doing. And then Stella, I, I do the spirit of what you said, I tried to get it down as quickly as I could, but it's just simple, positive. And I, I guess I would offer maybe to, between now and the next meeting to craft something. So it's really, it maybe is just, one or two sentences that we sort of lead with in all these discussions that allows us sort of a little bit of a unifying theme um, that just, I just, I think it's, it's about mindset shift and, and presenting it in, and again, like Estella was saying, the sort of positive spin, um, Etc. So I would volunteer to like come up with like a, a possible like it's really just a unifying theme, and that would allow us to then what Lori said like yeah then we go and meet Vasu's you know, this meeting, but it's like everyone we meet with should hear something like that. So I'll if that if it makes sense to to bring that back to the table and give five or 10 minutes to discuss it next time I would prepare that. And I would, and my starting off point would be what Stella just said um, as well. I guess I'd like to ask if, um, you know, Laurie um, offered to put together resources. I, I think you said for commercial building owners, is that right? Yeah. Landlords and commercial buildings, larger, larger conversions. Yeah. 
something yeah. I'm trying to learn. I know nothing about it, but I'm trying to learn about it. So I might as well document what I learn, right, as I go along. Yeah. And, um, you know, our other thought, um, it, it, we have outreach happening all, all, or already planned to happen to renters in multifamily units. So we're left with the um, single family um, residents and um, homeowners. And I wonder if anybody's particularly interested in that and would, or. I'm, I'm becoming very, yeah, I'm becoming very expert in that. So I could do that too. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sure others have uh, as well. But um, I'm, I'm, I could go, I could talk for an hour and a half about what I've learned so far about trying to convert my own house and how hard it is to get good information or a good evaluation of your home's heat load or manual J. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any rate, yeah, I'm learning all of these things. So I can try to do that. That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's very hard. To know you're doing the right thing. So I, I think this is a good way to start, and um, and then we can discuss how to actually um, get out there, <laughs> start <laughs> do, doing <laughs> meetings and things. Yeah. Yes, Jesse. Just real quick, Lori, if you're putting together resources on commercial buildings and properties, if if we were to run the numbers of sort of energy consumption on a cold day in Amherst, my guess is that the makeup air on commercial kitchen hoods would be a massive, massive culprit. And there's some pretty good resources out there as far as reducing that number with some simple technologies. And so that's, I would just say, I would just ask, see if you might do, add to that the commercial kitchen energy consumption particularly make up air for you know these just you know thousands and thousands of cfm of air warm air that's just being sucked out of buildings um and then needs to be heated again there's ways to reduce that even just not turning it on <laughs> the second you walk until you start cooking there's yeah. a lot out there so there's some really neat stuff out there that you'll and, find. and there's an enormous amount I, I don't know about so jesse I, I mean i'll put something together to get it started but i'm assuming that you and don will probably have a lot of things to add to it and change it and fix it um I, I, it's interesting because the hood even came up in my own kitchen i was warned not to get a hood with greater than 400 cfm or something like that because then it becomes a an issue so <laughs> yeah i don't think you need a hood more than 100 cfm to be quite yeah. honest <laughs> You know. So yeah, it's it, all these things come up even in miniature in trying to figure out your own house. Yeah. Cool. Okay, great. All right. I think uh, those are the items on the agenda. So let's talk about our next meeting and the agenda for next meeting. Um, so Stephanie, uh, Sue, I'm sorry, you didn't. Yeah. Um, discuss the solar bylaw working group update. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You kind of combined two things into one. Not you oh, specifically, oh, yeah. just the, the conversation led that way. Dwayne? Yeah, uh, yeah. so I can uh, give that update and, and, and Stephanie certainly can uh, chime in as well. Uh, so this, um, Solar Bylaw Working Group is uh, is uh, convened and uh, and have met for the first time a um, um, couple of weeks ago, um, blocking uh, June twenty. Uh, I forget exactly the date, but a few about four, uh, three or four weeks ago, uh, we do have a, a full cohort of the working group. Uh, in addition to representation from ECAC, uh, there's representation from the Planning Board from the Conservation Commission, from the Water Supply Protection Committee. Uh, and then there are three uh, residents. Uh, and so I think we have a, a good group. Um, and uh, we had our first meeting. Uh, and I'll say in, in terms of staff support, uh, happy to say we have uh, not only Stephanie, which is wonderful, uh, but also um, uh, Chris uh, Brestrup. Brestrup, is that correct, Stephanie? Brestrup. Restrup, um, or Chris, um, uh, Christine or Chris, uh, she is the uh, planning director. Uh, so great to have her. 
uh, as well uh, in our first meeting, which was um, got into some content, but it was mainly uh, getting ourselves organized, introducing ourselves, learning about open meeting laws again uh, and so forth. But uh, town manager, Paul Bockelman, uh, kicked us off as well and was there for the whole meeting uh, as well. So that was that was great. Um, unlike um, a committee, I guess, uh, this is a working group. Uh, we have a, a, a mandate and a schedule. This is not to last uh, indefinitely, but we have a year uh, basically to meet the charge, uh, which is essentially to develop a a draft a solar bylaw for the town uh, to then consider uh, through the town council and the manager. Um, uh, I will say one 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 action item we took was to uh, elect a chair, um, and yours truly was uh, duly elected. Uh, so I'm chairing that committee, um, which um, so fast <laughs> uh, we can commiserate, uh, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, and um, uh, I'll draw a lot from uh, um, I, um, uh, um, uh, seeing uh, seeing uh, Laura uh, chair this committee. Uh, but um, so I, I will say that it's going to be a lot of work on my end, um, just so I, I'm going to probably um, be a little bit less available uh, for for ECAC, except for reporting back and 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 um, uh, helping out where I can. Uh, but anyhow, we have our second meeting, uh, which is scheduled uh, for Friday, uh, this Friday. Uh, we meet for two hours. Uh, we have a pretty robust um, I, um, agenda. Um, I think basically we're still a little bit in the in the learning phase. Uh, we have um, Christine, uh, the planning director, is going to give us sort of a, 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 a zoning 101 um, a primer. Uh, so there was sort of get all up on board on what what zoning is all about, really. Uh, and then uh, and then we do have three model bylaws uh, that we've identified that we will be reviewing as a group um, from um, from the uh, Cape Cod Commission, uh, from PVPC uh, and from DOER. <clears throat> uh, so we'll be going through that. Uh, and then and then uh, spending some time in terms of uh, uh, sort of setting out the agenda uh, for you know, what are some of the bigger issues that we need to to uh, to address in the coming months, uh, and, and then sort of what's what's the agenda for the next couple uh, for the next meeting? Uh, we will be trying to meet um, fairly frequently. Uh, we're going to try to meet uh, two more times this summer before the fall, uh, and then and then I probably uh, biweekly as well in the fall. But we'll we'll decide on that um, uh, come come fall. Um, we are at this point meeting during the daylight hours, uh, so we're meeting Fridays at, at uh, Fridays uh, Friday at noon for two hours. Um, uh, I we might we might try to do a similar uh, early evening or late afternoon meeting like like this one, but um, but um, people are welcome. It's obviously open meeting, uh, and I will uh, report back uh, after at each ECAC meeting. I suspect as as needed as long as there's been a, a uh, interim uh, working group meeting uh, and uh, and try to get as much input as uh, I can from this group and report out and, and uh, represent our charge and our um, mission uh, well in the uh, in the bylaw group. Um, Stephanie, anything to you'd like to add? I just will say hi to Stella's uh, Stella's uh, <laughs> comrade there. <laughs> um, I yes, don't have Steve. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Um, yeah, that that's great, and congratulations, Dwayne, on getting to be chair. I think um, I, I I watched that meeting, and it, and yep. it looked like you had a lot of uh, a lot of good support there for that. They recognized your expertise. Um, one suggestion that I would like to make you in your agenda for I think this meeting coming up on Friday was what other sort of one on one topics might the committee want to uh, have introductions to. And I would suggest that you consider having a one on one on the Massachusetts Clean Energy Climate Action Plan, J just okay. so that all of the members in, in the public who are watching can get a sense are what do we need to do by 2030, 2040, 2050 to meet the climate goals that we have set? 
Great. Yeah, that actually was uh, passed around and, and identified as a resource for us. Um, but uh, but uh, yes, um, uh, in fact, we have a, an agenda item for, you know, what are our future topics, yeah. uh, 101 topics sort of. So I will put that down as a um, as a for for a discussion as well. So, yeah, appreciate that. Great. And good luck. It looks like you have a great group in that in that committee. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm uh, really um, pleased. Uh, I mean, the different perspectives. I think one, one thing we're going to um, focus on a little bit on Friday is is learning a little bit more about each other. Uh, we did relatively quick introductions, but I, I want to get a better sense of where people are to the extent that they can share you know, where they're coming from, what are their perspectives, what are their um, primary goals um, and, ex and expertise that they can they can um, offer to the to the group. So, yeah. Sorry, Steve and I are having a little bit of a lower hand competition. And so that's why Steve keeps switching on your screen. I keep lowering it and then he lowers it and ends up raising it. So sorry, that was just a little behind the scenes humor. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dwayne. And I, I think you've also brought up the point where you said you're not going to have the bandwidth to support you know, other activities, right? And I think that's also something that I want to touch on, and we'll talk about it, uh, I think, in two meetings. So as we get into the execution of some of these actions, how do we execute them, but also the bandwidth of everybody in the committee, I think we're all volunteering. So that's important to know. And so I ask that you know, everybody, if you can just document how much time you're spending or how much time you're willing to or how much more are you willing to take on? I think that's important because that is key as we drive execution of some of these actions. So we'll, we'll talk about that in, in two meetings from now, um, but the ask is, is still remains. If you can just document everything that you're working on. All right, anything else? If we're moving on, I, I've marked some of the things in the notes um, for next meeting that have come up. Yeah, do, do you want to read them out for our, our next uh, agenda actions, Sandra? Yeah, might have missed some. Um, and, and I don't know if any came up before I was taking notes, but um, a couple. Um, so uh, Stella said uh, she could uh, get the chart out about the transportation resources. Um, and we were interested in talking about that. Um, and Laurie offered to put together um, some resources that she can find um, for building owners. Um, hey, will you be ready before our next meeting, Lori, on that? Or that's not enough time? I, I can try to get it. I mean, <laughs> I can try to get a draft together and we'll see where it goes. I'll get as much together as I can in two weeks. You, okay. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't even try to make it exhaustive because right. we'll all look at it and say, oh, well, I know there's this list over here and it has half of what you have and more. Yeah. Right, right. And then there's also, you know, the, I, there, yeah, right, exactly. So I, I will put together what I can. I'll try to find what already exists. That doesn't take more than, you know, I'll, I'll Google around for an hour and see what I can do or maybe two hours and see what I can come up with. And then we can talk about it more next time. Um, and Jesse is going to prepare something that we might be able to use as a unifying theme. Uh, our elevator pitch. Yeah. Um, and um, it, depending on, you know, what timing of meetings that Stephanie can set up um, that, as, that she offered, um, one might be a report back on um, the outreach meeting with the um, community participation officers. And there's one other meeting. What was it, Stephanie? Sorry. Oh, I don't know about a meeting. I know I also said that uh, I wanted oh. to talk about the documents that I 
worked okay. on for ARPA. Yeah, so yeah, follow yeah. up on some of the upcoming projects that I'll be working on that would actually right. involve you all as well. Okay. Um, yes, you you um, mentioned um, scheduling a meeting with the inspector for oh, yeah. um, Steve and Laurie was interested in that. Jesse has something, so go ahead, Jesse. Oh, I, I wonder if it, we might just add for uh, two minutes on the agenda for next time to, to formally thank Laura and Andra for being chair and launching this committee. Andra, just cover your ears for a second while we discuss this. Um, just just a quick kind of, I, I think it'd be great, even, even if it's just in the minutes to just really, it's just a tremendous amount of work has gone it's, I think it was longer than anticipated four hours. And so I think I'd, I'd love to suggest we do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I would be happy to craft as I'm, I'm gonna look through a lot of our stuff as I craft the elevator pitch. So I'd be happy to craft that um, as well. And it'll be awkward and rambling like everything I do, but so it goes. And Stephanie, you said you didn't have information on the heat pump program. Is that something that you also captured? That's, a, that's part of the information that I just said, uh, the initiatives okay. that I'm working on for the ARPA funding. I'm going to send you all the documents. You'll have the documents, so you'll see it. And then we can okay. talk about more about what the heat pump program might be. It's not, it's loosely defined. Um, so you'll you'll see when you get the documentation and then we can discuss it at the next meeting. And then Anna wanted to talk about the capital inventory memo. You're not going to have any room for your meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think Anna's gone. She was only able to be here at the beginning. Well, let's add it if she has an update. Uh, she can talk to it. And um, we already have a packed agenda because I was going to talk about how do we take all our items from the CARP and start working on the execution piece. So let me work with Lori behind the scenes and then figure out what it needs to look like. Um, so you'll have to post that meeting because you're two people. I, I know you're chair, but I, I need to check on this because when you're working on an actual document, I know I need to check on that. When you're actually working on something like wait, that, wait, wait. it's a little separate. If no, this is just, you're just talking about the agenda, right? You weren't talking about the agenda. They were, he was talking about the um, CARP implementation. Yeah, I'm just talking about the, how do we go into execution or the right approach to executing the actions in the CARP? It's just a discussion to figure out what our strategy is going to be going forward. Um, would that be an open meeting? I, I don't, I, I, I think maybe you, you know, um, I would like to recommend that you and I talk maybe okay. about that piece, because I feel like often when you all talk, it doesn't involve the town piece and I'm doing a lot, right. like what I'm sending you, you're going to see a lot of what you've been talking about is in a lot of what's been moved forward through ARPA. So it'll make sense. And also I've worked on the same thing that you worked on. I worked on with the finance director because we have more of the information in terms of actually budgeting and what funding might be available. So I let's just talk about that. Can we just sure. talk about that separately? Yeah, it's fine. Stephanie, do you want to set that up? Sure. Um, yep. Um, I think I missed something, but hopefully Stephanie's getting this all down. <laughs> There's always the recording I'll listen to, so. <laughs> okay. Anything else that we want to talk about? It's already a packed agenda. I do want to cover CPACE at some point, but it won't be the next time. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll open up to the public for comments. Stephanie, anybody you see? So if anyone has any comments, um, 
please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. No one has their hand raised. Okay, I guess we'll wrap up early then. Thank you all for joining and have a good evening. Oh, See what, you before you oh. go, please don't leave yet. <coughs> Just so you know, I, I sent you out an email earlier about this, but the state legislature uh, has um, not extended the uh, allowances for meeting remotely and open meeting law. So that that expires on Friday and it actually expires at 1201 on Friday, which means for instance, the solar bylaw working group has to actually meet in person in the town room because when we scheduled the meeting, I thought Friday was kind of, it was through Friday, I was wrong. <laughs> so we actually have to meet in person. So that means that unless the legislation comes through in the be. next few weeks, we'd be having to meet in person for the next meeting. So the one thing I do want to ask is if folks know ahead of time that you can't make it, you have to have a quorum. And in this case, that means um, five members have to be in person four of you potentially could be remote. You need to have a reason, you have to fill out an, um, a form to request remote participation. That's the sort of formal way you do it when the old mm -hmm. open meeting law standards were required. So- And um, contact your senator, our senator and rep <laughs> to tell them we really want this extended. What I understood, yeah, what they, I understood happened was that the Senate was fine with just extending it as it is and the House had changes that they wanted to make to it, which in some ways would actually make it more complicated is what it sounded like to me. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> so I, I, I will be writing to you about the accommodation then because otherwise I think I have to miss the next two meetings and the meeting in September. Okay, this is the, yeah, this is always the problem. And, you know, you can always send me an email to that effect and copy the town manager's office just so they're aware. I mean, they know that people are struggling with this and everyone can't make it, but just maybe if they're having some conversations with our local reps, they may want to include that. Yeah. I will also be out of town on the, our next meeting, the 27th, I think, the July 27th meeting. Um, and probably not able to, to zoom in or come in online since I'll be too many time zones away. So, Lori, you could potentially be remote. I can be remote anytime. I'm happy to be remote, but I have, but I will be out of town for at least three meetings in the near future. Okay, like Steve, is there, um, are there others who will be unable, completely unable to attend the next meeting on the 27th? Not completely, but I, I think being in the, the town hall is gonna be a little bit of a stretch at 4.30, um, just wrapping up work at the time, so. And Stella, I know it's, not possible for you is that true yeah i'll definitely request remote access um so that's already well that's three people is there anyone else who knows that they would absolutely need remote access on the 27th the other thing that's important to note is that you can't the quorum has to physically be in the room so you can't have four members in the room mm -hmm you know, and one member on as a remote, even though that makes five members that constitute, constitutes a quorum, that person has to be there. Oh, and the other requirement is that the chair needs to be physically present. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So it would be either, so either, so if Vasu couldn't do it, then Lori would have to do it. And Lori's not chair. here. <laughs> and Lori's not here to do it either. So that could potentially be a problem. I yeah. think it, it's um, okay for the chair to designate somebody to chair in I, there. I, I will need to make sure, absolutely make sure that that's the case. So I will find out 
let's hope they extend the remote meetings. Yeah. Um, well, I'm hopeful too. Also, because it means that it's so much easier for people to participate. You know, we don't yeah. often have that many people in person come to the meetings, but we've had substantial attendance. Is Mindy Donathor is our state rep? Who's our state rep? Is that Mindy? Um, yes, Mindy. All right, good. I know who I'll be writing to this evening. <laughs> um, okay, so I will find out, um, you know, if all things being equal, if we if we don't end up uh, being able to meet remotely and the meeting on the 27th has to be in person, I'm going to check in with the town clerk's office and get their official opinion on whether the chair can designate someone else to chair the meeting that evening. If not, I will let you know and we may have to reschedule. And I would move that if you find out it's okay to designate that we all agree that Don chair the meeting <laughs> or I'll chair the meeting or just if well, there's we, some like weird red tape that like because we didn't talk about it in the last two minutes of this meeting like I'm happy to chair the meeting okay. yeah. so Jesse you'd be willing okay absolutely if if that's the only way to have a meeting Thanks, I, I can physically be there Jesse so if I can too happens. John I can probably I can we walk across the out, if we both looked out our windows right now. Yeah, yeah, I can walk across we, the street. Yeah. So we we the, each other. Who are the five that would physically be here then? Andra, Allison, Selman, Bru uh, no, Bregger. Yeah. And I, maybe I, Drocker. I don't know if Flora is going to be here on the Yeah, Tuesday. maybe me, but late. Uh, so I might miss, have to miss the first 20 minutes or so. Well, alternatively, you could start the meeting later. And we, you know, that's, can we the meeting later? Yeah. As long as we post it, if you start the yeah. meeting at um, five oh. instead of 4.30, that's fine. Yeah. You can meet five to seven. Yeah. Do you want to just say that now, knowing that? Sure. Well, only if we go, only if we have to be there in person. If, if this, uh, yeah, if we're allowed to meet remotely, I'd rather start again at 4.30. Okay, then that's what I'll, I'll make note. So if, because I have to post it 48 hours before. Right. You know, if they change it, I mean, if at 48 hours before, you know, in 24 hours they change it, we're kind of locked into whatever we've posted. We can't necessarily switch it up. How we've been, uh, how the solar bylaw working group is doing it, doing it, we're sort of doing both, but it still requires a, a quorum to physically be in the room. Do we know if we had that yet, Stephanie? Just off the I don't. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I think a few people have requested remote participation, but it's certainly not the majority. And what's our quorum for in person? Four. Four, four person. in person or five? No, uh, sorry, no, 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 no. Five, different group. The working group. Oh, oh different, oh, different yeah, group. Okay. They have to meet in person. You may or may not have to, but I will let you know. You will all know ahead of time. S Stephanie, a question is, does the quorum rule only apply if there's a vote or does there to even have a meeting there has to be? No, even to have a meeting, you have to have a quorum. I've just had this discussion with the, cl the clerk for the council because yeah. I have been in situations in the past when I worked with the Conservation Commission where we didn't have a quorum and we had a meeting. We just had general discussion. There were no votes at all. Um, and technically, I was told that's okay, but our legal counsel very strongly advises yeah. against it. So okay. the, right. the rule of thumb for the town anyway is that if there's no quorum, there's no meeting. All right. Talking like a lawyer, Stephanie, what's the penalty <laughs> if you don't vote? <laughs> um, you know, what do you do? You violated the open meeting law. Great. We didn't do any business. Yeah. I mean, not, not that I want to gum up stuff, but I don't know what the penalty would be. I don't know what the penalty would be, but I know what the town's policy of dealing with this is. And so that is what I adhere to. Yep. <laughs> so just for consistency's sake, I mean, if not for nothing else, for consistency's sake, it's good to just have one policy that we all follow. Okay, so Stephanie, right. it'll be either from 4.30 to 6.30 or five to seven next time. Right, so if in person, it'll be five to seven, if not, okay. It'll be 4.30 to 6.30 as usual. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sure. All right. Let's see Thank you, everybody. Yep.
Talk to you next meeting. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Thank you. Good job, Visu. <laughs>